This is a Western Digital Caviar 153AA. This is from 2000, but it shares a lot of its parts from the drives from the mid 90s. So let's tear into this one now. So this actually has a band, like a foil band all the way around it. So I'm going to have to take that off before I can take the cover off. Oh wow, that goes way in there. Thought the chassis would have came up further. But apparently not. Is this tape all that is sealing the drive? Interesting, I don't know. There's a little window into it right there. Oh, you can see through the whole thing. Wow. All right, these are going to be T8s. Yeah, see, these are T8s. Every single drive has a sticker on it. They will almost always have some screws underneath the label. So I just punch through the label like so. And then take the screw out just like that. All right, this should be the last screw. This goes on to the mode into the motor center of the motor bearings. Wow, that's a pretty drive. Look at that machined head. I'm sorry, not the head, the actuator arm. And what's interesting is this was also meant to accommodate more platters, made to accommodate three. This one was, oh, this one was also only meant to accommodate three. You can tell how many platters a drive would have by counting the spaces in between the actuator arms. This one also has a plastic piece on the back. For the, for the voice coil, that is. I think I can get my pliers under this one, huh? There we go. Oh, wow. That is a big voice coil. Holy cow. Oh, and look at the surface area on these magnets. They're huge. They're not very thick, but they have a lot of surface area. That's good. I just don't know why these drives have plastic... Actuator, well, I don't know what you would call that. The voice coil, coil holder, maybe? Interesting. It's a big voice coil, though. Alright, I'm going to put this magnet back on, and we'll plug it in. Oh, whoops. Get on there. Just like that, it's on. All right, there we go. Spins nice and free. All right, let's plug it in. Oh, this one's kind of weird. It has the 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 interfaces on the front of the drive instead. And this is what this drive is doing.
just does that which is not good not at all what it's supposed to do all right oh we should probably compare these so these are quite different as you can see This one has four screws, machine screws in the spindle clamp. The Quantum has six, which is pretty typical. There's this little plastic piece here. It looks like that just keeps this board down here. It's made of a thin ribbon material so that that probably keeps that in place or at least helps to anyway these are landing zone drives now most modern drives have what's called a oh i don't even remember the name of it it's a little plastic piece that the heads go and slide onto and it keeps them from being on the disc all the time So, landing zone drives are generally speaking not quite as good as the other ones. Load ramp, that's what it's called. It's called load ramp as load ramp drives. Come on. There we go. This actually has pins. That goes into there, which is unusual. Normally, there's just contacts. Now, this uses a NIDEC motor. NIDEC makes a lot of motors for industrial applications. They make fan motors for PCs and stuff. They make very, very good high-end motors. And this is also a separate motor. So there's going to be screws underneath here that you'd be able to remove the, mo remove the motor with. Or I should say, if you were to take them out, you'd be able to remove the motor. Here's the little pads on the bottom, spring-loaded. They just touch those pads on the motor. I'm going to put this board back on. I believe that's it thank you guys for watching